I first saw the movie of Howard's End when I was in uh, high school, and it spoke to me in ways that I could not have anticipated. I was a teenage Puerto Rican kid growing up in the panhandle of Florida where we were at the time the, felt like the only Puerto Rican family, and this was a story about Edwardian England, and it was about estates and inheritances, and, and it was so far away from my experiences, and yet, it really did speak to me. We don't actually call the inheritance an adaptation of Howard's End. I've taken the basic plot of Howard's End and the characters of Howard's End, and I've reframed it in the 21st century using gay characters rather than three families from three social classes. But what I've taken is the ideas of Howard's End, and I've used it to ask the question, what, what are the responsibilities from one generation of gay men to another? What is the continuum? What have I inherited from the generation before me? And what are my responsibilities to the generation that, that has come after me? The questions that E.M. Forster was interested in asking about social classes, I've taken and, and applied to, to being a gay man in America. The character of Eric Glass, I've taken Margaret Schlegel from the novel, and I've turned her into a contemporary gay man. But like Margaret in the novel, Eric is an idealist. Eric is someone who really does believe in a perfect vision of life, um, morally and spiritually. He, like so many people in New York City today, um, has a hard time trying to make that work in his life. So we take him on this journey, not just uh, a personal journey, but also a journey of discovery of what his inheritance is. Very literal inheritance that happens to him in the play, but also a, a spiritual inheritance, a cultural inheritance. He inherits a new life. The one character that I actually needed who wasn't in Howard's End was Ian Forster himself. I think I needed his guidance as I sort of took on the very audacious act of reframing his novel, and I needed his permission, and the best way to get his permission was to make him complicit and bring him in myself. You really do feel the presence of Ian Forster, and it makes it very special for us and I hope for the audience as well. We knew the challenge going into this was convincing an audience to come to see a two-part play, a seven-hour two-part play. I purposely chose a three-act structure for each play because I wanted to give the audience two intermissions per play. When we were at the Young Vic in London, I, an audience member referred to each act as an episode rather than an act, which was, was a new experience for me to, to hear it compared to a Netflix series. But it's something that we actually embraced. We really wanted the audience to feel like they couldn't get enough. Uh, and hopefully we've, we've accomplished that. Having the play come to Broadway is an absolute dream come true. I was four years old when I saw my first Broadway show, and when I saw my second Broadway show a few days later, it was to see my aunt Priscilla in A Day in Hollywood, A Night in the Ukraine. And so from that moment on, it, it, it's been a part of my life, and it's been a part of my dreams. I'm so excited to share this play with New York.